Assalamu alaikum and good morning. Today we're going to be studying up thrusts, but we're going to mainly be studying pressure. And under the topic of pressure, we're going to be focusing on up thrust. All right, and you can find this on orparho.live. The accompanying note can be found on orparho.live under the name up thrust plus pressure that's what the note is called right so let's begin i'm not going to start with up thrust first even though like if you look at the note up thrust comes first and then we talk about pressure i'm going to begin with the basics of pressure so hum o levels mein padhte hain ke basic formula hum padhte hain pressure in solids and in fluids hum pressure in solids mein padhte hain pressure is defined as the force and this is not just in solids this is just the truest definition you know the most basic definition of pressure which is pressure is force applied per unit area aur hum a levels mein kya karte hain a levels mein hum pressure ka in fluids hum pressure ka formula derive karte hain hum o levels mein humne pressure ka formula yaad kiya tha fluids ke liye it's rho gh density times gravitational acceleration times depth of the liquid ye humne rata tha o levels mein basically अनलेस आपके टीचर ने आपको डेरिवेशन सिखाई हो लेकिन हमने डेरिवेशन नहीं सीखी थी हमने डेरिवेशन ए लेवल्स में आके सीखी है तो उसकी डेरिवेशन पहले कर लेते हैं और फिर मैं इसकी सिग्निफिकेंस पे थोड़ा बात करूँगा तो डेरिवेशन ऑफ दिस फार्मूला स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द मोस्ट बेसिक प्रेशर फार्मूला सही सो वी स्टार्ट ऑफ विद प्रेशर इज इक्वल टू फोर्स ओवर एरिया सही है and for an object we can say that the pressure this pressure if by virtue of an object's mass and the gravitational force is going to have a weight and uh, we let's just call weight w over a we substituted force with weight now we can split weight into the mass times the gravitational acceleration because remember we do we cap that's how we calculate weight over area now p is equals to m times g over a now density is defined density is defined as mass per volume so one could argue that mass can be defined as density times volume is equals to mass so that's what we're going to use we're going to substitute mass m for rho times velocity density times velocity into g over a right and velo oh, so sorry i said velocity oh my god i i mean volume rho times volume substituted in place of mass because they're equal now volume can be written as like for example the volume of a prism can be written as this area times this height right so we can write further divide volume into area its base area times height and divide all of that by a so now since everything is just being multiplied here we can cancel a here this is pressure on the side pressure is equals to now rho h g and a has been cancelled so we can just rewrite this as the rho gh formula and voila humne derived kar liya hai pressure in fluids ka formula now the thing that's important here and ye ab general derivation dekh le samajh le yaad karne ki zarurat hai nahi kyunki Sometimes they ask, like in MCQ, they might ask, "What is the concept that is used when deriving the this formula? Pressure is equals to rho g h. Which physics concept is used, utilized?" So, in that, you you should have a general idea. Ratta lagani is not needed derivation ka. Just look at it once, twice. You know, understand the process that it goes through, and then you should be fine. And what's interesting about the pressure formula in fluids is this h. This H plays a lot of key parts in later chapters like up thrust, 
where we know that as the depth below a liquid increases, since P and H are directly proportional according to this formula, we know that as depth increases, pressure increases. And that is the foundation that up, the concept of upthrust is based upon, right? And uh, I'm looking at the note right now, and it shows atmospheric pressure. And you, you should just, just for your information, atmospheric pressure. This is just a quick fact. You should know this number by now. Like, you should have it memorized because we've used it so many times in O-levels. But 1.01 times 10 to the fifth, 10 to the 5 pascals, or 760 mm of mercury. So, yeah, just remember that. It'll be helpful. It's just a quantity that you got to remember. About the upthrust bit. In the simplest words, upthrust is the force experienced by an immersed object, an object that is immersed in a fluid. Wo force, jo apply hoti hai ek object mein jab wo pani ya kisi other fluid mein submerged ya immersed hota hai. So yeah. Ab kyu apply hoti hai? That is the entire premise of this topic. So wo padte. So imagine there is a container of liquid. Uh, liquid this is liquid let's just call it water so yeah and here we have an object place karte. and yep this is the object and now if we have this point pe, meaning is entire depth pe pressure calculate karte hai, versus is depth pressure calculate karte hai. so let's just call this p0 and p1 actually p0 is atmospheric pressure let's call this p1 and p2 um, since we here established that pressure in a fluid is directly proportional to depth below depth below its surface so yahan pe depth x hai yahan pe depth definitely greater than x hai. so yeah so we can confidently say that pressure 2 is greater than pressure 1 pressure 2 is greater than pressure 1 now this means that on the object this force is greater than this force so i'm gonna draw it visually too this is the force and this is the force so, yeah. so the force pushing it downwards the pressure of water pushing it downwards on its top surface is less than the pressure applied by water on its bottom surface that's pushing it upwards as a result there is obviously going to be a net force upwards maybe not that big wait this is getting messy i'll just draw it right here let's just consider this is the same mass m m and we had our two pressures applying two forces so the downward force was small and the upwards force was relatively bigger so as a result there is going to be a net force upwards this is net force so yeah, as a result there is a net force upwards and that force is up thrust okay now calculating up thrust so yeah um, i'm going to redraw this diagram because it got a bit messy so let's do that whatever right. submerged in liquid we are able to say that p2 is greater than p1 and this is a regular shape so we can also calculate the area of the two faces the cross-sectional area the area of the two faces or in general terms is a cross-sectional area of the object if it's cylindric cylindrical but in this case it's a prism so it's just plain and simple area and we know that pressure is equals to force over area so we know that pressure one for example is going to be force over area one and multiplying and solving for force gives us p1a1 is equals to force and we call it force one which is force one is the smaller force of the two forces 
so this is f1 and the second is f2 which we also did right here it was this big force right and there's going to be f2 and f2 is going to be equals to similarly p2 a2 gives you f2 so we know that and we know that up thrust is the net of these two forces up thrust is the net of the downward force due to water due to the water pressure and the upwards force due to the water pressure so we can say that up thrust which we're gonna call small u and don't confuse this with initial velocity u which is gonna u here is up thrust which is gonna clarify so no confusion about that and f1 sorry f2 minus f1 gives you the net force upwards right or you know that the area is the same if it's a regular prism so you can take area common so you can just remove the one and two you can say a so you can say p2a minus p1a and you can just do p2 minus p1 take out a as common and this is the formula that's written in the the note and that's how we arrived at it right where pressure two uh pressure two in the where pressure two refers to this pressure on the bottom surface and pressure one refers to this pressure on the top for the top surface due to water now there's a second formula which is not exactly a different formula it is basically a derivation from this exact thing it's u is equals to rho fluid times gravity times volume of the object so yeah it's a big v and how we arrived at this formula is pretty simple we're going to start with the this formula we're going to start with this right here we know that up thrust is equals to f2 minus f1 and then we were able to say that it's equals to p2 minus p1 over a given that's a regular prism and the cross-sectional area of the top and bottom faces are the same or sorry the not the cross-sectional the top and bottom areas are areas are the same so we came to this and we know that pressure is due to fluids in both case so we can say rho g h1 minus rho g h2 <coughs> rho g h2 a say so, yeah. and taking rho g common we can say rho g a h1 minus h2 and if you notice here if this was h1 oh, wait this was p2 we should have said h2 h1 h2 h1 my bad but yeah let's call this h1 and h2 when you subtract h2 minus h1 you get this height and that is the height of the object right so the height of the object and rho g a times height of the object and this we know the the area times the height and in this case we know it's a regular prism area times height gives us the volume so rho g and volume and we can say rho of fluid but we know that we're talking about the density of the fluid so that is how we arrive at the second formula that is mentioned in the notes that is all i'm gonna do for this video i think you can go through the rest of the notes there's a sample question that talks about different forces there's weight oh and there's up thrust oh also i should also mention this if you come across it in the notes because it's not defined there viscous drag viscous drag refers to the force the resistive force experienced by any object when it travels through a fluid when when an object travels through air we call this viscous drag air resistance right and some people when object travels through water some people call it water resistance but the general term for this kind these kinds of resistive forces is viscous drag so yeah when you go through the note just be aware that that's what viscous drag is yeah so i think that's as that's all the explanation i'm gonna do